Shalom, I'm Richard Peretz, and our special guest today is the president of the Jewish National Fund, Stanley Chesley, a most highly respected Jewish community leader in the United States and internationally. He's been honored many times, and in fact, President George W. Bush appointed him to serve on the honorary delegation to go with President Bush to Jerusalem for the celebration of the 60th anniversary of the State of Israel back in May 2008. Stan Chesley has always been one of Israel's greatest advocates. He serves on a number of national boards, including the Board of Governors of United Jewish Communities, the American Jewish Joint Distribution Committee, Israel Bonds, Executive Committee of APAC, Hebrew Union College and American Jewish Committee, and of course, the United States Holocaust Memorial Museum. We are very honored to have him join us on the Shalom Show following these messages. With us now is Stan Chesley, National President of the Jewish National Fund. It's a real pleasure and honor to have you on the Shalom Show, well, sir. Well, I appreciate very much being on your show. Thank you, sir. Tell us a little bit how you perceive the challenges facing Israel and Jewish life in general at this strange time in history, sir. Well, I don't think it's a strange time in history. I perceive the growth of Israel as being the big plus and also the minus. And let me explain. It's been my position for years that Israel has done more for the diaspora than the diaspora has done for Israel. What has the diaspora done? We volunteer, we give time, we give money. What has Israel done? Israel has given us integrity, commitment, a feeling of Jewish continuity. It is what makes the Ju Judaism, what we have today. I've been criticized uh, by many people because I'm of the opinion that by virtue of what Israel has done in 62 years, and I'll get to that in a moment, what Israel has done in 62 years is so phenomenal and so special and such a mark, that's why they're a target. Consider the technology, consider the people, not the archival, not just the culture, but what they have accomplished in 62 years. And let me give you a contrast. The United States of America, the greatest country in the world, love it, do anything for it. When the United States of America was 62 years old, 95% of the population was in farming and 30% were slaves. You understand we had a constitution and we had the independence, declaration of independence that all men are created equally. Yet we had slavery. And 30 years after the 62nd anniversary of the United States, we had a civil war. We lost 660,000 citizens and our population in the United States then was less than 30 million people. And what did we fight the civil war over? Slavery. Think about it. And then people want to criticize Israel or they want to say, well, gee, they should do it this way, they should do it this way. It's a true democracy. Have you been to Stero and seen what we've done there? Of course I have, sir. Yes, it so happens. I, I've just done a couple of shows on Jewish National Fund in which we featured Shdewat and the horrific environment and the conditions they've been subjected to uh, thanks to the neighbors. And uh, I'd like you to pick up on that point. Right. I didn't know Stero from San Francisco until I went in February 2008, had read about it, and went into this town of 25,000 people, most of them, many of them immigrants from Russia, Ethiopia, middle class, 
hardworking, and their only, only negative thing was their location, a mile and a half from Gaza. No Air Force base, no Army base. And they were under a barrage for six to seven years of rockets. That would be like me being in Cincinnati, Ohio, having a barrage of rockets from Covington, Kentucky. We wouldn't stand for it. And the first thing that good citizens in Israel said, well, maybe we ought to move these kids out of there for safe harbor so that the kids, 5,000 kids, aren't part of this. You know what the citizens of Stay Road said? No way. We are staying here together and we are not moving away. People from the surrounding areas moved into Stay Road. I'm there in February 08. It'll take a few minutes. And there's 40 of us there from Conference of Presidents. We're there and we're under military guard and all that good stuff. And most of the 40 people there were cleaning their hands and they were saying, oh my gosh, we need more psychiatrists. We need psychotherapy. We need this. We need that. I sat on the floor with the kids. I said, where do you play? Oh, we don't play. And their English is perfect. What do you mean you don't? Well, we can't because we got to get to a bomb shelter within 15 seconds. that meeting, I called Russell Robinson. You met Russell. I've interviewed him. Spoke to Alan DeBrow. And I said, guess what? We're going to build an indoor safe playground, and we're going to get it done in six months. Everybody thought I was crazy. How's that going to happen? Number one, you don't start with a new building, not bricks and mortar. We found a 23,000 square foot building that had been a textile factory or warehouse. We got the IDF involved, Mayor Moel, and then Mayor Buskilla. I said, I want this done in six months. We need 32 permits. The IDF came in, told us we needed 350 tons of steel. We needed four bomb shelters inside. And every bomb shelter, as you know, one is a computer room, one is a disco room, one is a soccer field. We couldn't even have a merry-go-round in there because the IDF said, nor could we have soft floors because the merry-go-round can't stop in enough time for them to get to a bomb shelter. We now have 900 kids a day. And my favorite story is when the little kids came within the first two weeks, there were 105 dolls for the little carriages and so forth. And I got a call that all the dolls were gone. I said, they didn't steal them. They took them home to go to bed with them for God's sakes. They're all safe and sound in Stay Road. We'll buy another 105, and now you can buy a doll for Stay Road. And what did that have to do with Jewish National Fund, which is our brand name trees? It had to do with initiative of Jewish National Fund being able to determine what was needed, when it was needed, and how it could get done. And you know what? We're doing the same thing with water. Ron Lauder, our former chairman, our chairman and former president, let's get in the water business. You knew how to be in the tree business. We're green. Let's get in the water business. 210 reservoirs. Guess what? Reservoirs are so successful. Now we've got to get into desalination, and we've got to get into sewage, which we're in, Air Force Base, Ramon Air Force Base, recirculation of water. For example, for years and years and years in Israel and the United States, how did we do irrigation? We just blew it up in a hose and let it evaporate in the air. And they said, we can't afford sweet water, so let's go to breakish water. Let's have recycled water do the crops. And now drip irrigation, it, that technology was started in Israel, and they're doing it on reserva Indian reservations in the United States. I think your, your iPad or your iPod or one of those that technology started in Israel. Teva, the largest generic manufacturer of drugs in the world. It's one of the best kept secrets, Israel. And I believe when you see this, this rampant anti-Israel conversation like we had this morning, what you really are seeing is a new type of anti-Semitism because of the success of Israel. 
If Israel, God forbid, had turned into Pakistan or Bangladesh, you wouldn't see anybody going to college campuses screaming and yelling about Israel not being a democracy. So the net result is, that is why, in my opinion, we, the diaspora, are so fortunate to have Israel. I was reborn. I've been very, very involved in Jewish charities for 50-some years. You name them, JDC, Board of Bonds for Israel, UJA, all of which I've loved. Some nice people came to me and said, we want you to get active in JNF. We want you to be our president. This has been at my rebirth. These past three to four years have been the most excitement. I go to Israel every, every two months. Let me give you a story. I took two of my grandchildren that had never been there. My daughter-in-law is non-Jewish, who had never been there. And I took her parents, and he was a Vietnam veteran. And I made arrangements to go to an Air Force base. And not the Air Force base with the F-16s, but the Air Force base that had the Hercules, the same plane that went into Antabia is there. We went, he got to sit behind the controls. We went, then went into the dining room. This is a non-Jewish person. We went into the dining room. The general came in. Don, my daughter-in-law's father, stood up and saluted him. That was an international piece of language, wasn't it? Absolutely. Now, where do you get a story like that? Let me give you another story. Sometimes I go to Israel and I go with people that have gone there a lot and they see everything. And you start to learn about those people. So the key is to take people to Israel with birthright, March of the Living, young people. Alan and I just had a meeting with 20 young people, high school kids probably more meaningful than my conversation with 400 people today because it's Jewish continuity. So you've seen the river walk in Beersheba. Yes, of course, yeah. And in, over on one side of the river walk is a junkyard with crushed automobiles. Have you seen it? I've seen pictures of that, actually, oh. yes. So everybody I talk to that goes to Israel says, can't we get rid of that or put a, put a, put a sign around it or put a, put a, a fence around it? Can't, get, can't we get rid of those junk cars? You know what my 14-year-old grandson said who had never been to Israel? He said, Papa, don't get rid of those cars. I said, why, Nathan? He said, because that way you can show the contrast between what it looked like before you got there and what you did with the Riverwalk and Adams Well after, you, after JNF came in and did their work. Good point. Out of the eyes of children. So Israel is an ongoing, as far as the traumas with Israel, peace, you know, every day there are crises in the world. One of the reasons why Israel, in my opinion, has the kind of problems it's got, is they're jealous. Stan, this is most interesting. I want us to continue, but I must interrupt you for a moment. We have to pause for these commercial messages.